All right. Is everyone ready? Yes. Yay! Yes. 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 All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, folks, I am super excited to be here. I definitely want to give a giant, giant thank you to a few people here. To Joe and Marky for just putting this together and keeping the group going and thriving. Thank you for that effort. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah! I love it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I also want to say thank you to all of you for showing up. Your time is super valuable, and you would choose to spend it here with us. So that's really important and meaningful, so thank you for that. And I'm sure you're coming here like, well, I mean, I didn't come here to see you. I came for some knowledge. Well, we got plenty of information coming your way, and I'm thrilled to share my topic with you. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mark I'm was back. away because he had his first child. Yes. Oh. So very busy. Mark was one of the original speakers for this group. First, uh, first speaker. And, and for those of you that don't know, he's actually a lecturer at Northwestern. This guy actually teaches JavaScript for a living and has taught yeah. multiple people in this room. I have. <laughs> And they came to see him anyway. And he came anyway. <laughs> he's not making this up. He actually knows what he's talking about. Maybe. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this. So I love the introduction because it just stole my second slide, which I can now skip past. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm talking about setting your data ablaze with Firebase. So I am Mark Thompson. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at Mark Texan. If you want to read the things that I write, you can find me at MarkTexan.com. All right. Talk about it. So who am I for those of you who have not been in my class, evidently? Uh, so this is me, right? So this is my big, big role that's really important to me now. I'm a father, that's my kid. We took this on Father's Day this year, my very first Father's Day, which is super, super duper awesome. So a lot of my being away was because I had a kid and I was teaching a class on Thursday night. So just the whole thing, no sleep, no time, but now I'm back and it is good to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I'm classically trained software engineer. I like to say classically trained now, just to make it sound so artisan, like I'm classically trained. Uh, so I'm a software engineer, a university instructor. I teach at Northwestern University downtown, and I'm the founder of my own company this year called Totally Strong Inc. I got my articles of incorporation, so this is an actual government entity now, or a legal ent entity recognized by the government. So I am technically an entrepreneur and startup founder with zero dollars raised in a C <laughs> round. So, you know, if you're looking to, you know, do some uh, equity deals or something, yeah, let's, let's talk to me. Okay. All right, so let's talk about Firebase. Just for a show of hands, how many people have ever heard of Firebase? Oh, I love that. Now let me ask you this, how many people have actually used Firebase? Not bad. I mean, I expected zero. I expected more people to just stare at me and be like, okay, what are you talking about? But I'm going to tell you anyway what Firebase is. So there's a, a shift in mindset and thought at Google about Firebase. Firebase started off as a as their flagship product for this new type of database. But since then, it's actually transformed into a platform. So Firebase is no longer one thing. It is a platform for, I, I say mobile in parentheses for a reason, for application development. I say mobile now because what Google is trying to do with Firebase platform is to use it as a way for, if you're making a mobile app, instead of provisioning servers, instead of provisioning databases, instead of provisioning, provisioning federated logins, they're saying use all of our stuff. And you can start off with no problem. You don't even need to learn what Heroku does or what DigitalOcean is. You don't even need our cloud apps. We'll give you everything. So that's what Firebase as a platform is. So some of the things that they use or they provide for you are now machine learning stuff. You can use that with Firebase. Just write plug and play machine learning. You have authentication, so you can do either what we call federated logins, meaning you can log in through other services and then use that as your uh, as your login provider, or you can do email and password through Firebase. They have two types of document databases. We'll be talking about one of those today. They also have this idea of cloud functions where you can do serverless uh, architecture. And when I say serverless, I think we're all starting to understand it just means not your server. Right, because the server has to live someplace. It's just not yours, right? But you write these little functions in the cloud. All right, so you have all these ideas. And so that's what I say, uh, Firebase is a platform. So if you think about all the tools that they offer to you as a mobile app developer, or even as a web app developer, there's a lot of the hard stuff you no longer have to do, right? You can build an app in probably a few days versus 
this idea that you have to do a lot of other things. Think about just trying to make login work, like an actual login. It take you a couple of days trying to figure that out. But with Firebase, they're like, hey, use our stuff, plug and play, and you're, and you're off to the races. But today, we're going to talk about specifically Firebase Real-Time Database. The Firebase Real-Time Database. So why would we even be talking about a real-time database? What are some of the reasons you need a database that's in real time? Why isn't Mongo just good enough? Why isn't MySQL just good enough? Well, let me tell you some of the benefits or, or value add that the, the real-time database will give you. One, there is no server setup. You can actually, so this is a pro and a con, but I like to look at it as a pro because, you know, be positive, right? So be an optimist prime, not a negatron. Okay, uh, so it's no server setup. And it's hosted by Google. So what I mean is, if you want a development server, then you're gonna have to make sure you have an internet connection because you can't set it up locally. So you can't download an instance like you can for MySQL or Postgres where you can set it up locally, be offline and develop. With this, you're probably gonna need some type of Wi-Fi or internet connection when you're developing because it's all hosted by Google. It works on multiple platforms. And when I say multiple platforms, they've built all the drivers, all the communication tools to work on iOS, Android, their cross-platform tool, Flutter, they want you to be able to work with web. It even works with Unity, the game platform. So it works really everywhere, which is a really huge win for you because if you have cross-platform communication that you need to do, there's no extra work for you. You just set it up for that platform and your communication is gonna work. Really valuable there. It's a document database, JSON. Why, because JSON is America's favorite data format, <laughs> all right? <laughs> we just love JSON. It gives us everything that we need. It works natively in JavaScript. You don't have to do any parsing, right? That is the beauty of JSON. So the fact that the doc is a document database that gives you all this value of being able to, do, especially with your web code. Your web code, things are just gonna start to work. You get new data in, you don't have to do any changes. You just start working with those objects. So for web developers, front-end developers, full-stack developers, all these things are very valuable for us. And this is my favorite part about it. Real-time communication between the client and the server, and I do mean real-time. Let's think about the traditional model for database stuff. So traditional model, you have a database, and let's say you may have a web client and then a mobile client, right? And let's say that your, your, your web client talks to some server, okay? So don't start, you know, engineering me up here and thinking like you can't talk to a database directly from the web. I know. I've written some code before, okay? <laughs> let's just assume that our web client, though, does, you know, talk to a full set. So if you wanted to talk to our database on the, on this, on the side of the screen, you usually have to do two things. If you want to get the latest changes from the database, someone tell me, what do you have to do? You got to pull it. So you have to, like, issue a request via an API maybe, right? So if you're on the web, you do an API request to your backend, your backend does some type of query to the, you know, the database, and then you have to like pack, package it up with some type of ORM. If you're so inclined, then you send that back to the front end, right? That's the usual model. Same thing if you're on mobile, you gotta do the same thing. You gotta write some queries if you want to know what has changed in the database or what the changes are. What if the database changed and you didn't ask about it? You still have to poll to find out. You want, but the one thing is the same. You want to make changes, you just send a request with some new data, and you write to your database. Well, Firebase says that this is OK, but we have a different way. I won't even call it better. I won't be so biased. I'll say there's a different way. Here's a different way with Firebase. Let's say that our web client, and this time I don't mean from the server side. I do mean from the web, from your actual JavaScript, makes some updates to the database. Here's what Firebase does for you. The new changes get sent to everyone who's listening. So think about it. If you're trying to draw some mental models about what I'm saying here, think about it like this. Instead of you having to manually poll, it's almost like the mailman has come to your door, the mail carrier has come to your door and given you your package. You don't have to call them to do that. When your package comes, what happens? They walk to your door and they give it to you whenever there's a new package. Whenever there are new changes, Firebase will walk to your door, your client door, and give you those changes. Now that becomes if you subscribe to them. If you're subscribed, 
Right, you have to be subscribed. So you have to have asked for these things. <laughs> you have to have asked to be included in these updates. But if you have asked to be included in these updates, you get them for free, meaning you don't have to do anything extra. If you, if you start listening, they're there. Now you may say, well, that is a good thing and a bad thing. Of course, with every technology there is a pro and con to every approach. But Firebase does a good job, at least, of giving you options. Because you can also ask it to only give you a change once. You may not want the changes forever. You might want them one time. And you have that option, too. Let me just take a break right here and, and answer any questions so far. Sure. Web sockets? Behind the scenes. Yeah. All abstracted away from you. And it's not even a leaky <coughs> abstraction. And, and that term really means that you don't have to understand how it works on the back end to be able to use it. Not to say to fix it, just to be able to use it. So it's actually a pretty sealed abstraction where I never have to think about, is my WebSocket open for this to come through? I never thought about it with developing with Firebase. Sure. Is the same thing that Meteor does? Oh, I, I'm, I don't know for sure, because I, I have not used Meteor. Sure, sure. So in the subscription mechanism, right, so I want to subscribe to updates. Am I saying uh, subscribe to anything, or I want to subscribe when this document changes? So an example being you're on the product detail page versus the catalog page, and now I just want to subscribe if anything happens with this product. I don't want to hear about everything else, but right now I only care about <coughs> this document changing or this record changing. Can you specify? It? So Absolutely. Okay. So you get this idea. So the, and I'll talk about this a little bit more when I go into the diagrams and show you more about how it works. But the overall idea is that your data is, is in these, let's, let's think about folders on a, on a computer. You have folders inside of folders inside of folders. That's how your documents are kind of set up to where they're nested. And you can specify, the same way you can specify a path to CD into, so you'll CD space, you specify a full path, you can specify a, pool, a full path to subscribe to. And with, at that path, you say, any changes at this location, let me get those changes. Or I can say, let me get changes from root. So I just pass, give it a slash and say subscribe at slash. So I get all changes throughout this whole document, the giant document. Okay, that's definitely not efficient because the way that Firebase works, it is free to use, but it's more of a freemium model. All right, it's freemium, meaning they give you different tiered plans. And most of us with our hobby projects will never get past their first tier. But if you go into production, it's pretty easy. If users are, if your app is popular and you start using it, you'll start having to pay for the size. So you want to be very clear about which updates do I really care about? Which ones do I want? So you really want to be uh, focused there. Yeah? Is it actually sending you the changes that has been done or just signaling you that there has been a change and you can put it down? Oh, no, it sends you the actual change so that the happened. The data. The data that happened, exactly. So if you had a... Can you just ask for just the change so it doesn't apply you with like a big record of... Oh, just the delta between the two right. records if there's or an update? Or just the, the ID of the, of the record that has been changed. So you can, get, you, you can get a little specific where you can ask for the delta instead of the actual change. So let's say that we have a, a document of contact information, okay? And Mary changes her email address in that document for her contact. I, if I'm listening to that, to that tree of, of data, I'll get the, that whole document that Mary changed with her contact information, I'll get the whole thing, even the fields that were not changed. But I, I believe that you can get more specific and only ask for the Delta. Can you only ask for the ID? I'm not sure about that one. Okay, well, these are great, great questions. I love that you all are asking these questions. Yeah. <laughs> so this one's gonna show my age, but. Sure. Uh, so, Cause I'm really not up on NoSQL at all, but. Uh, the transformation of data, uh, you know, back in the day, you either just write out SQL to kind of pull all this and join that and do all this stuff and transform it into what I need, or uh, you could have like a view or a stored procedure of some sort. So, yeah, just give it a second. Yeah. Probably come back. Yeah, we're back. Check out their course. There you go. Um, so am I just constantly getting a JSON object raw from the server and now I need to transform that myself? Or is there a way for me to do something that's like a join and you know some transformation of data uh, from uh, sure. Firebase? Yeah, so while we're here, this is a great time to just talk about this now. 
verse then, because anything that sounds too good to be true usually is, right? And that's one of the limitations. So what Joe is describing is about the complexity of the queries that are available to you, right, and the data transformation. That's actually one of the weaknesses of Firebase, at least the real-time database, is that if you want to do very complex queries, what they usually recommend for you to do is to structure your data in a denormalized way. Data normalization means that data kind of shows up in one place only and not repeated places. Well, they really prefer that you repeat data when necessary. So you have different views of the data. You may have a full record where it has lots of details, or you may have a smaller version of that record that is a combination of other data that you may need. Sure. So that's how they, they ask you to get around it. Versus the traditional NoSQL database, like a Mongo, you actually can do some forms of a join. Even though you can't really do a strict join, you do a form of a join through this thing called SQLize, which is an ORM, which will let you say, hey, here are some IDs in my document. Find the other documents, wherever they live, that match these IDs and populate the hydrate. Okay, so good. So let's do a demo, because I think that seeing it, seeing is believing. Seeing with Firebase is believing because when you first, when I first heard about it, I said that it was magic and it could not be real. Because just because of the way it was described. It just can't be real. It's not real time, right? There has to be a delay. I have to do something to make this thing work. So if you have that skeptical behavior or thought about it, you should always have skeptical, skeptical thought about any magical technology because it can't be perfect. Just no such thing. But let's just see one of the ways that it works. So I have this nice, crispy little app here. All right, so I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click again, I'm gonna refresh. Wait, I did not refresh? Why does it still say five? Oh, is it because that's how many times I clicked? Okay, so, wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. There is so much more. So let's go to the console. So this is the Firebase UI. And you'd have, I did some setup beforehand to just save you the laborious nature of this part. But let's say, where are we? OK. Get out of my business, everyone. Don't mind my business. I'll mind the, my uh, business. Key logger plugged in? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. All right, so I have this thing called Mark Texan DB. And when I go here, here's like that the huge list that I was telling you about of all these the services that Firebase provides, like the authentication functions. You can do ho uh, not hosting, hosting there. So if you want to deploy your app to the cloud on your own, you can you can do some hosting there too. You can do static apps, or you can do smarter like full stack apps as well. So it's really literally they want this to be your full like your one stop shop for your mobile development. So like hey, we'll give you everything. I'm not sure you should do everything, but. They give you lots of options. They even have analytics. So you can get tons of like usage analytics for your apps, whatever they are, mobile or game or whatever. Whatever app you have, you do tons of analytics. Okay, so here is my Mark Thompson DB. And wait a minute, hold on. Hold the phone. Seriously, somebody get your hands out, grab it, and hold that phone. Okay, <laughs> let me take this here. We're gonna go here. Don't look. Well, it's like Christmas. Didn't. No, you didn't. It's like Christmas. Ready? So this is the cloud. Wait, you don't believe me. Get out of here. Get out of here. Hold on. Look at this. Not my computer. Agree or disagree? <coughs> Raise your hand if you agree. Your host file. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can. I love it. I love it. It's my host file. It's my host file. I love it. All right. But this is my computer, local host. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't lie to us. You wouldn't lie to us. <laughs> I mean, look at the speed of that. Hey, wait, what happens if you change it on the right? Huh? <gasps> no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, oh, dang. I told you that it was magical. <laughs> I mean, seriously, when you, so, so this reminds me of the Hello World demo from when Angular 1 first came out. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's like, when you see this, it's like, okay, what? How did that all work? How is that even possible? But it, when I say it's real-time communication, I made a change on the server side, and it went to my client. I made a change on my client side, it went to the server, but if there were other clients listening, they would have gotten either change. So take a second to think about this idea. You know that WebSocket and real-time communication the programming is just challenging in general, right? Pretty challenging to do. Imagine what you can do now. If you can think of, of, of a use case, we're going to do one, you probably already saw the preview we're going to do, but just imagine all the things you can do 
when you can have real time communication. All the things that we used to put um, set timeouts to refresh our screen over time, right? Like all those things to make data seem like it's real and live. Now it is. Wherever this gets updated, whether it be through a mobile, web, game, whatever client, even directly, those changes get broadcast to anyone who's listening. And that's like, in, in terms of value add for me, that is huge. That is huge because a lot of the real-time communication is the hardest part. And this is why we don't do a lot of real-time apps. You're like, yeah, you can refresh and get the real data. That's how you can get your real data. Refresh the screen and quit bothering me. Okay, what's up? <laughs> is there a limit of how much data you can send over? No. Is there a limit of cool. your wallet, though? No. <laughs> so, so, so think about it like this, right? So there's uh, transfer data costs. So I'm not sure what the limit is. I'm sure there's some hard limit, but you will probably pay more before you got there, which would make you stop trying to do that, right? Because you have to pay after a while. So the amount of data that I'm doing is so small that I'll never go over the to two gigabyte like free limit. But eventually, if you go over two gigabytes of transfer per month, you will probably start looking at ways to cut down your data anyway. So that doesn't really become an issue. You understand know what I'm saying? It doesn't really become an issue because of that. Yeah. And theoretically, the limit would be whatever HTTP's limit would be because WebSocket, in essence, is still a server client communication. That's right. Between. So whatever you're sending, it's still HTTP transfer. So it doesn't right. Really and I'm 100% sure that there's WebSockets underneath this, right? They didn't create any like new protocol. I bet you if we were to open the, the console right now, we'll see some WS protocol going around, right? So I'm sure this was there. So it probably is. That's a great, great feedback. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, what I, what, I, what I mean is like FCM has limits of how much data you can send with the notification. I was wondering if they do have some like hard limit that okay, you can send Oh, I better understand you now. At the same time. Yeah, that I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. That's a good question. I'm just not sure what the answer is. Well, I mean, it just gets chunked at some point, right? I mean, that would be if they were clever about it. Save as much as you want, and we're just going to stream it in chunks, and then put it back together yeah. on the other side. I mean, you kind of, when you're getting into pictures, I take a picture and I want it to flash up onto 10 people's stuff, then you're going to right. start getting into data issues. Well, you right. can base 64 encode that thing. Yeah. So you can do that if you want. Up. You can base 64 encode, or they actually have Firebase Cloud Storage that you can also use too, which is for storing like, you know, binary like files like that. But can you store uh, like a blob in Firebase? Like I'm sure, I mean, if you could, if you could do well, it as text, you, right? You base 64 on code, it's if you do base 64, you, you get that yeah, huge string. Yes, yeah, it's still the, JSON. It was like you could probably store that huge string, 100. percent Sure. Yeah, but yeah, so so it's possible. It's possible to kind of like you know try to like get around the system and not really have to use certain things. But you know, do what works. That's the best thing we always do. You yeah, know, do what works. So so I'm gonna click some more because I want to see what I can do. <laughs> oh, so works. I just want to show you that my video game <laughs> fingers from 1999 are still intact. Look at that, 67, <laughs> how many have I done? Wait, I'm gonna do double fingers. Getting strong. All right, my, my forearm is getting sweaty, so. <laughs> okay, but as you saw, the there's, so I won't say it's zero lag because I have been able to clog it up where it'll take a half a second or 300 milliseconds to get the latest version of the data back to me or up on the cloud where, you know, I'll click a bunch of times and then it'll stutter just a little bit. So I'm curious, because do a little set interval and have it click that thing. Oh, sure you could. No, no, no. no. I was like, you want me to? That was nice. So okay, so I'll do it. You <laughs> set the pay, no, 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 but no. I'll do it. I will do it. Okay, so let me get my life together here and let's jump into demo number see, one. Is that what it is? It's uh, high contrast. Yeah, it's just high contrast. Yeah, it's contrast. Yeah, it's just high contrast. Okay. It's good for presentation. Sure. You know what else is good for? People who have various degrees of color blindness. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I had, a, I had a, a few thing. students who actually had color blindness that did not realize that there were parts of their code that were broken because they couldn't see the colors from the color scheme that I was using on their computers. They had no idea that the squiggly lines were there. They're like, what lines? I was like, well, you don't see all these reds, like what lines? So then I switched to this and also tell other instructors just for you know inclusion and accessibility, always use this now when, you, when you're presenting or teaching. Or something like this, like a, a high accessibility like like screen like this. So and it works really well for for presenting. Yeah, super sharp. Look at that. It's too small. Make it bigger. I have a perfect excuse for my broken code. That's right. <laughs> couldn't see it. It's like I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right.
right, so let's let, let's walk through how I set this up because I don't want this to be magic. I, I want you to kind of see the parts that I did. So I'm using some bootstrap here, and this is the entire part of the clicker. Normal bootstrap, and I actually include jQuery. Oh no, he used jQuery in 2018. How? What does he? What is it? Why not view? Use what works. I always tell people, use what works. You don't always have to be with the latest and greatest. Just to be with the latest and greatest. Document that query selector works. Even better. <laughs> I just don't want to use it. It's <laughs> too many letters. It's too many letters. Okay, so here's the, the the CDN library that I need. I'm sure that I can pull this in through some type of dependency manager. They do have a CLI for Firebase where you can uh, start your app's command line first, and then it'll like facilitate the creation of your cloud databases, et cetera, so you can, you can do that, and you can probably pull this library in with the CDN, so if you're concerned that you don't want to have the dependency, but you need the dependency anyway because if Firebase is down, then your app doesn't work. So, you know, that's, that's the downside though, right? You're completely dependent on something you have no control over, right? I'm, yes, but I'm guessing that Google has a prescription for that problem with, uh, you know, progressive web apps and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, that's a different talk. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, there, there must be prescription for that issue for offline applications. For this, actually, Firebase is super smart. That if you are able to load it, so let's say we did load this locally, the library locally, it'll store those changes locally in the local change set until you get back online. Thank you. So, so it does help you with that way. But again, you have to be mindful that because this is a hosted solution, that you can't do an internal network version of it. And I, I like to be upfront about that type of stuff. So, yeah, sure. Can you um, use just the just the messaging part of it, meaning that you don't want to store the data; you just want to send it down to the clients and then get rid of it. Yeah, save the record and then delete it. Yep. <laughs> but there's also a cloud messaging function with Firebase that is probably more suitable for what you're asking. Right, but the FCM has a limit of how much you can, so you can't send the whole data, whole, whole record down. You can just send like okay, this. There is another application. Sure, sure. Place. But if, you, if there's no sort of limit in here, you can send like a full data and then don't store it on the data. You just want just to send it down to the client. Sure. I mean, and then you can do that, right? Because you have full dominion like over this once you have your instance. So you get to use it how you want. So instead of creating big JSON documents, create small rows of data. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, and do, do it how you, you prefer. So you got a lot of options. We've used this in my class to create a rock, paper, scissors game like in real time multiplayer, right? So still using the type of communication, but like from, for a game, because it's the real time that you care about. So a lot of value there. This stuff is fine to be public, so I'm not giving anything away, right? Because you get to set up authentication and authorization on your apps. I can't get it. Right, so you, you can copy this, because if I deploy this app, this is gonna be available, so I'm not worried about like any secrets being here. You can have, that's where the authentication mode comes in, and you can set the auth rules on your Firebase database to be someone who's auth authenticated only can even read the data, so you can protect your data. Okay, but this is the configuration that they provide you. You don't have to type any of this. Actually, I didn't type any from line 25 to 35. I didn't type any of that. I copy and pasted it when it created my database. It gives you all that to get going. They want to make this process as frictionless as possible. Okay, so to get started, you can do like three clicks, type in the name of your database. They're like, okay, please hold. Oh, here's the thing to put in your application. Good luck, get started, have fun, all right? Here's a really cool line, Firebase initialize app. So we use that Firebase library that is being brought in via line 25. You initialize the app with that configuration. Now you're off to the races. So this object, Firebase, now, now is connected to your remote database. Pretty easy setup. So no config files like separate if you gotta like go through any drama. Pretty easy to set up for yourself. Or pretty straightforward, I don't like these word easy. Pretty straightforward to set up. Okay, so when the document's ready, that is just an old jQuery thing. Nothing to do with Firebase, okay? Here, I want to get access to the database. So I store it in a variable called database. I'm using a little bit of ES6 here. So I could be using var everywhere, but I'm using constant like just to make sure that I'm getting into the habit because eventually all the browsers will be ES6 compatible, so mm -hmm. I'm forcing myself to get into the habit of using ES6, even though I'm more comfortable just typing var and long word function and stuff like that. Okay, super duper fun. Here's the magic, you may say, well Mark, how do I subscribe? Well, here's how you subscribe. This part right here, that's how you subscribe. 
So let's look at this part. So here, this is a location in the database. That's what that part is. It's a location in the actual database. Remember I told you about all those folders that might be subfolders, etc. So let's say that I wanted to do something under the clicks. I could do, instead of just clicks, I could do clicks slash count, for instance, and subscribe to that part. And let's say there was another part underneath, clicks slash count slash time. I could do that, and then that could be the location. But right now, I'm just using clicks. That's where in my database the location is. This looks a lot like jQuery for those of you who've ever used jQuery, because I'm using dot on, which usually signals that we're going to be doing an event listener or event handler for something. So I'm listening specifically. So here's how you read this. Let's get our database. Let's get a reference to the place called clicks. When we're there, let's listen for a value event on the clicks location in our database. So we're listening for the clicks location in our database. A really cool thing that we get here is the snap. The snap is, a, I put snap, but it's really snapshot, which means when there is a change, a value change, it's gonna be in that variable name. It's gonna be right there for me to access it. Let's, so, so this, is, this is fine on line 44. We're saying snapshot, give me that value again. Looks a lot like jQuery, right? But it's very similar to jQuery. Run the dot val. The dot val returns you the actual JSON object that was at the location that was changed. So what we can do from there is we get a property on that object. So dot count is not a part of val. Dot count is a part of my JSON object at the location of count. Let me show you. So if you look here, here's the clicks, and then there's count. So my object. If I were to try to draw my object from here, I would get an object that looks like this. Oh, I can probably change that yellow and white, right? It's probably not the best. Let's do this. Bye bye. Okay. So then we do, so we probably get something that says count with a value of 91. That's what's going to be in my snapshot. So when there's a change, this is the <coughs> object that I'm actually going to get. Can you tell me, teacher? Can you, you still get my little pen? Oh, fine. I'm Get my little pen out and I'm like, oh, so here you go. All right, super fun. Hey, this is what I, this is how I roll, I love it. All right, very fun. You said what? You just need to jump into this bandwagon. I mean, this is pretty amazing. I love this thing. Microsoft, if you ever watch this video, I love this thing. I like a new one. Exactly, I like a new one. When the Surface Book 3 comes out. Put, put me in the line. Okay, so then I take the value of count and then I Set it using, you know, I find the class and click count, and then I set the update. So this tells me to listen for the changes. I'm listening for the changes. I'm listening for the changes. So as soon as I go to my website, my web page, this will run the first time and give me whatever's in there. So if you have previous data that maybe you want to populate your screen, so let's say you have like uh, contact cards, you want all of them already. So instead of me having to manually ask for them, when I run this, it'll be there the first time. So at first I get this, the data snapshot from this location, then, then I'll get all the updates after that. I'll get all the updates after that. Okay, bop bop. All right, so let's move on. Here's where I'm actually doing the magic. I, on this line, I'm saying database ref of clicks, set, and then I send it a JSON object. So here's more of the ES6 magic. But what I'm really, what, I'm, what this could be expanded to is, oops, excuse me, mark please. <laughs> okay. So it could be expanded to that. So send me an, send an object up with the, with the key called count and the value will be whatever the value of the variable count is. So that's what I would really be sending up. But because those are the same name, ES6 gives us a little bit of succinct formatting there. So because this count and this is the same name, ES6 is smart enough and JavaScript is smart enough to figure out that's what I mean. That I mean count colon count. So again, just some neat little tricks you can do. And then I just update my screen. So that's that demo. And again, that is the like, you know, the angular you type in the field and it shows the name changing in real time. You're like, oh my God, what am I doing? This is amazing. Okay, let's do something more fun, more challenging. I bet we can do it together. How much time do I have? Because I bet you I can do it in whatever time I have. 
call it 15 minutes. I can do it in 14 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 14 minutes is all I need. <laughs> One minute for questions. Oh, God, he's going live code. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking all this, this crap about we can make a chat app pretty easily. Let's prove it. I did not pre-create this. You've never written this code. For this, no. <laughs> the only thing I made was this. So I'm gonna do a username, do M Thompson. So this is actually on a uh, Ingrock server because I'm gonna get one of you with the laptop to prove that our code works by the end. So I already set that up. So I wasn't working on my presentation. I was working on the setup. Thank you very much. It's not on the side of your presentation. <laughs> 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 Whatever, M. Thompson, so I did all this work. I didn't want to bore you with this part, with the UI, right? The UI, we, we kind of figured this out. I didn't want to bore you with it, so I just set it up beforehand. But I promise there's no Firebase under there, because if I hit refresh, it's all gone, so. Clearly, there's no Firebase. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly. All right, so let's set this thing up. Let's do this. So here's what we need to do. So we're gonna, first we need to close this. And then we need to say a little prayer that it's going to work, and then we get started. Okay. Here's my Firebase initializer. So I guess I lied. There is a little Firebase initializer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I lied. I could have said it was snippet. He'd be like, where'd that come from? So I just, would just put it in there. No secrets. So here's what we need to do. So let's, let's, let's analyze the problem. Let's analyze the problem. So here's what we need to do. One, in this database, we do not have the location for the, the chat. So we'll put the chat in location. What we kind of need to do is this. Whenever you hit enter, we need to send the message with some information. It needs to have the time or the person who sent it. And let's start with the message that they sent. Let's see if we can get that part just working, where we can just start a basic chat. So I'm going to try. So uh, let's see. So we got our database right there. Bye bye. So I'm going to say, Okay, all right, all right. So down here, if they enter, so this means if they enter what, what key? Enter, right? If they hit enter, that's what 13 is. Use one, sorry. Enter, enter. enter. If they enter, enter. Enter, 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 enter. That's right. That's right. So I'm going to do Firebase. Assume that lie. I'm really going to do database. Database.ref. What's the ref that I really want? Let's just call it check. Okay? So it doesn't exist. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to push something. So push is how you add to Firebase. So set, so think about set like this. You want to overwrite. Push means it's almost similar to a pen. So I don't want to overwrite the chat history every time there's a new message. I want to add it to the chat history every time there's a new message. Let's see what we can do here. So we're going to push something. We got to we gotta get this party started. We gotta get it really started. So we're gonna say user. We don't know what the user is gonna be yet. We'll figure that out in a second. We're gonna say message. We don't know what the message is gonna be. We'll figure that out right now. So I think message is going to be. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. I will just steal all of this code. We're gonna steal all of this. And then don't worry. I wrote it. I have full rights over it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah. All my students in the room or former students are just like, oh yeah, this seems very familiar. All the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I coded in class. So if you ever want to take my class, this is what you're in for. Well, that's how it works too, by the way. That is how it works. <laughs> yeah. That is right. All right. So here's what the, the username is going to be under this jQuery location with the class. I almost asked you, how do you know the class between a class and ID? Like, hashtag ID dot class. Come on. All right. Woo! Bye bye. All right. Let's <laughs> just keep going. Go on. Oh man, I'm having too much fun. All right, cool. So we got these two things. Now I'm going to ask you from right here. Before I move on, are there are there any questions that I can answer at this point from right here? You're gonna sanitize those strings at all? Nope. I'm just going to trust. <laughs> I'm going to trust my app. Yeah, yeah where's your user trust? <laughs> you know what the, the, the troll level in this room is so high. Welcome He's, back, Mark. You guys say welcome back, Mark. That's been for nine months. Exactly right. Welcome back, Mark. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. So let's say Mark. Here's what Mark said. Welcome back, Marky. Because Marky wasn't here one day. Hit send. Ugh, yeah. 
Well, that's how you live your life. You need to. That's how you live your life. I don't know what happened. You can use a little, little cypress over there, Steve. Yeah. I need something. I've only written the test first. I think only. Have you actually pushed it up to your group, sir? I don't know how to do that. Uh, like Pengrock? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to just work. Yeah, it should just work. Like opening up okay, another one. Like DJ Khaled, another one. Oh, so oh, oh, oh yeah, uh, duh. Yeah. You know why it didn't work? Because you put my name in it. No, because I never said an event handle on the send button. Dang, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I said it on the inputs for 13. Okay, I don't want to waste it. Trying to get me to, to break my time limit. No. So here's my chat. Here's my object. Oh, look, look at that. So guess what, what Firebase did for me? Could you guess what this is going to be? I think. Yeah, like, like a primary key almost. Like a primary key. So it just created it for me. Because remember, document databases don't really have any defined structure. You really get to define the way they work. Very loose, very dangerous because of that, but also very powerful. Here it's saying the first chat is under this ID. We can use this ID later if we want to look it up. So now I can go markthompsondb slash chat slash this ID to find that specific message. Ba ba. Okay. Okay. So now that we got that working, I feel so good. I feel so good. Let me get an emoji up in here. What's the good emoji? I like to use the hard eyes because it's just not in my rotation really. So I feel so good. <laughs> and it's there. Okay. Let me see. Ba! Yeah. Look at that young emoji. Bob, Bob. Okay, so so far so good. Our chat kind of works. So let me just refresh it. Let's refresh this thing. Oh, oh it doesn't work. What happened? What happened? Sad face. Oh, not I never, I never read it back. Right? I never read it back. So let's get that working. Does anyone remember, just out of curiosity, what do I need to do to get that first set of the data? It's on values. On that. Ooh, you're sucking I have. Okay. Bow, that's how you take it home. Woo! You guys, it's special. I have some students who are just like, I have to work six months to get a dad. He gets one on the first day. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to do database dot ref of chat and on what? The value. So this is going to run the very, very first time. So it's going to give me a snap. And then I'm going to give it an arrow function, which means I can't use the this of the function, but I have to use the one from the outer scope. Be careful. Be careful. you got to know that. That's why I didn't use it for jQuery, because I used this. Just letting you know. Didn't I do a talk on that before? You should watch that one. There was no jQuery. There was no jQuery. But yeah, there was no jQuery. But you should watch my other talk. <laughs> you should watch my other talk. <laughs> okay, so let's check this out. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore him, that's all. Yes, you should. Just ignore it. All right, so let's see what, what's in this value when we get it back so we can know how to program it. All right, so we're going to open up our console. We'll go here, get rid of this. I'll make it more giant, please hold. So I, I think we're convinced that Firebase is being updated in real time. I don't think I need such a dominant space for Firebase. So let me zoom that in. And let's just refresh this, and let's see what happens. Nothing. Oh, there it is. So it took a second. Okay, so I have an object with all, I have an object that has object children. Isn't there something I can do with that in, in JavaScript? If I want to iterate through an object, you want to know what I can do? For, 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 for all of it. Object key. I don't want to do that first, I'm in the future. <laughs> Why would I do that? Why would, I'm not going to use using jQuery, I'm going to use JavaScript for for in, thank you. For, let's say, chat in, Messaging. let's just say, let's call it messages. Okay, messages. And messages, this is gonna, for anything that's iterable, uh, not iterable, this is well for one with keys, because you, you do for up. This is for up or for in? We're about to find out, because one of them's not gonna work. No, I what's that? You do object values. Five minutes. <laughs> That's all I have minutes. left? Five minutes. Look, I'm almost oh, done. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm almost done. Arguing with you all, you can't make me lose my time. <laughs> all right. So let me just prove that this is the right thing. Does anybody notice this, how you still write programming, even as a, a teacher or as a professional engineer? It just happens. It's the way you, it's the way you live. See? Each, that's each key. Perfect. That's what we want. Okay, cool. Let's go back. 
So now, now we have access to our key, like our chat key. Let's call this a chat key. Because that's really what it is. It's not just a chat. It's a chat key. All right, should we do const right here too? It ain't going to change. Okay, so if we look in the messages for this key, we should be able to get the user. And what else can we get? The message. And the message, yeah. So let's do this. So now that we know this is what we need, can we use this function? Nope. That's too bad. I need to make another function. Okay, cool. So I, I did not think this part through all the way. So I'm going to switch this up so it can take a user and a message. So it take user and then takes message. The other one is hard coded, and I don't want to rewrite it and break the part that's already working. So we'll refactor later with our with our test. Okay, and so we're going to change this on. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that message for user. Okay, got it. Nailed it. You folks ready? Let's do this. I'm super excited. I can't. I cannot hide it. All right. Bam. Bop bop. Look at ready. Bop bop. Oh, hold on. Bop. Oh, wait. Bop. Looks good. Okay, cool. So now we got that, but we really want to for each one of these. We want to append it to our chat server. I mean, our chat little window. So let's do that part. So we're gonna do uh, dollar sign chat dot append message. So we'll do this. We'll say const of let's say HTML equals this. Oh yeah, we did it. I'm so proud of you all. <laughs> we did it. Okay. Okay, dot, is it called chat? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's close enough. Dot append, because we don't want to, we might want to do prepend, we'll find out in a second. I'm, I'm, I have a sinking feeling. I'm going to do prepend, things are going to come in the wrong order. Yeah, So I think you're right. It's probably going to be prepend, but we'll fix it. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Wait, it's not done. Oh, it doesn't remember. I could, yeah, for sure. But I haven't set that up. That's what I was going to show you. So I can change this. But what's the problem? Sure. It's doing it over and over again. So let's fix that real quick. Let's fix it. So instead of doing these every time we want the value, I, I think I just want it once. I just want this once. This is on the initial value. Right. The initial data store that you're getting. Got it. Right. So I only want this once. So if there's a change from here, I don't really want it again. Because yeah, you don't have to write the whole thing every time as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That, that is right. That is right. I can fix that. So I'm going to change this here. So I changed it to fill estimation point. Did not change it. Here's a better event that we can use. Because you might be saying, what is it going to do? Well, there's a better event. And the better event that we can use is called database.ref on chat. And I would do dot on, and we'll do child added. So I only want the child. I only want the child. So the new change only. I only want that. So I'm going to do snap of that. And then we'll do arrow. And then I think we're done. I actually think that we're done with our chat server. You misspelled database. Who misspelled? First off, this is the right way to spell database server. I just don't want to use it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I believe that our snap, so I believe I can just do, if I want to be fancy, can I just copy this? Not all of it, but part of it. Can I copy this to here? Can I get rid of these bozos? Bop, out, bop. Okay, so, so this is right. And we do cons HTML. Okay, so so far, so what I'm gonna do here, I think, in my heart of hearts, I can do snap dot val dot user and snap dot val dot message. Bop. I could do that and then I'm done. Okay, because it's not the whole list anymore. It's just the one, the one tiny little object that changed, not the whole list. So instead of having to go through each one like I did before, this should be just the one. Now I'm being super like confident about this, I can be super wrong. So let's just find out. Well, I'm done. So let's, so I'm happy. Okay, so let's see, my name is still Mark Thompson. And then I'm like, hey, I'm done. Boom. Yes. Woo! Who has the laptop the internet right now? To prove that this is really real time. Are you are you good? Like the connection she's internet? Good. Yeah. No, I know she's good. I mean, I mean she's on the internet. <laughs>
she's been waiting. <laughs> I know that's really ugly because I don't pay for the full service. 84414 lowercase a 80.n rock.io. Alright, zoom out, man. Well, I want to see yeah, if you it. Gotta see the change. You got it? Oh. Alright, moving on. Who else got a laptop? It's blocked. Right, it's got it. Anyone got it on their phone? I got it. I got okay. it. Okay. I counted. Yeah. Alright, everybody start. Send talking. some messages. Prove that it works. I sent one. Is this coming? I sent one. No, that can't be right. I just, I just saw something up there. Yeah, it's it's coming up right. Right. Why is it not oh. coming on my own? <laughs> it's not going on oh, screen. dang. Should have quit while you were ahead, brother. I said once. <laughs> and change it back on. No, <laughs> because you get the child. I got a Resto's message. Why haven't I got Wait, let me refresh. And cause... mine doesn't say that. cheating. <laughs> no, if I refresh, it's cheating. So there's everybody's message. No. Nope. Send another one. Just try. I did. Mine doesn't What the flip? <laughs> Thanks, Firebase, for nothing. Well, I guess my data's not quite a blaze. Wait. Yeah, if you reload, it'll yeah. work. So your initial load is grabbing them, but oh. not the real time. All that Firebase's fault. Wait, but why? So I got my child added on the chat. So this should be running every single time you all add a child. Oh, maybe this is wrong, and I didn't even realize it. You fun seeker Mark Thompson. I broke it. Hold on. I broke this. I oh I know why Mark. Okay, I only have one minute, but I'm going over two minutes. <laughs> Come on. So this is this is the problem. This is the problem. It's not appending anything because I bet you my snap is wrong. So let me do this real quick because I was being too too strong. Too cavalier. Too cavalier. Like LeBron James who lost. Okay, cool. All right, console. Hold on. Well, let me get rid of this other one. So this one is fine. So now I understand why I think things are broken. And actually, it makes sense because this should have been a double. Because technically, I shouldn't need to do the second one. I should only need to do one now. Because it should just update itself. So let's just find out if it's an update or not. Okay, let's do that. All right, let me refresh this thing. See, live coding, I told you I didn't write this before. So we got all the messages. Man, y'all are like, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. The only, only one person put like a, a, new, a nice message. Marky, shame. Unbelievable. <laughs> He's just talking about himself. Okay, so let me see. Uh, LOL, LOL, if I did enter. Oh, that's why. Wait, no, this is the thing right here. So, okay, so that's good. No, that's snap. Right, so then we just snap that vowel. So let's get to the bottom of this. So that means this is happening, which is good. This is good. This is good. Yeah, snap. Please hold. Comma. That way it doesn't interpolate object object. Pro tip. Okay, so let's let's get this thing working. All right. So now, so here's snap. So that should just work. Snap. So I'm getting the update. Somebody send an update real quick. Yeah. See, it's there. The data's coming in. So it's just me. I'm the problem. Because I bet you I know what it is. I bet you're super small. I bet you it's super duper small. <clears throat> what have I done? Probably something with jQuery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, message it. HTML, something, you know? Yeah, let me see real quick. Cause I think that's what I mean. Cause we're there. Like, like, no, we're good. Now we are there. We got. We're gonna get this chat server. Oh, console that log in there. What did I? What did I put? Just console. That's what I meant. <clears throat> There's no function called console. Just not there. There's not that called console. You right. You right. So if you weren't using jQuery, <laughs> you would do chat, and then that element you would do insert a JSON HTML before begin, after begin, and then your HTML. You'd be done. And your shit would work. Well, everything so, works. No, it's coming what up. What the Look, hell? It's coming it's up. Cool. Right. So what's okay, that? that was com that is K. All right. Let's just just go with that was supposed to be K and move on. I'm I'm oh, cool with that. Wow. I don't, oh. I don't wow. care about that. Yeah, what that what did I do Jesus. wrong here? Well, so the thing that's not happening is it's not doing the chat dot append, right? You're right, it's not doing this part. So something's wrong with jQuery, and I don't know jQuery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm good with that. Dot query selector dot chat. So actually, then insert a JSON HTML. Is chat not what you think it is? After begin, is it and then your HTML. Um, is it ID chat dot chat? 
Well, you need to assign that to something. Or no, no, you're right. You can just do insert adjacent to HTML right there. Insert adjacent to HTML, and then and then you're going to pass in the string. That is my after strategy. begin first before HTML. You're going to have after begin the string after begin. Okay. That's a real command. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like like after begin, comma my this HTML. Is not big and then your HTML. No, 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 but the you're you're no, logging no, all of the HTML. You're gonna, just type HTML right there. You're right right there, there, like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. This is my programming. I meant to do this. <laughs> 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 Unless. Your element doesn't actually have a class of check. That would be the other problem. Well, I copied it from here where I'm doing the pend. That's oh. right. So that one's working. All right. Then have at it. No, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm Live with you. Verbal coding. I'm with you. I support you. <laughs> you support me. Now, somebody said. Uh, oh, Mark. <laughs> you've, you've made my life. So Did that work? No, no, no. no. It threw an error. You console logged the entire HTML when a new message was put up. So that's working. We got that part. Well, it's, but it's bringing all of the HTML in every time. It's not just bringing in the new one. It's bringing in all of it. That. Hold on one second. That like append. HTML. It's all. And HTML. The that should work. I don't know why it's not, but it should work. But well, it should not be the obvious. No, it's not. It's only one at a time. I'm just console logging them all. Someone send me one last message. We can do it because I'm, I'm, I need to be done here. So, I, I, if this doesn't work, I would just call it and we would just say it was close, but we didn't make it. Yes. Scroll down. Scroll. Yeah. Whoa. Oh yeah. Why did that? Suddenly it was always working. It wasn't scrolling down. I thought you would scroll down someplace else, so I did. Uh, I didn't know here. Okay, uh, folks. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. This is so, in closing, aside from this idea that you need to know to scroll down when you have a scrolling <laughs> overflow, beside that, you saw how much work it took to make a real chat work. This is a real chat, right? I mean, of course, we can embellish it, add timestamps. We can do things like uh, add keywords to do like um, Giphy and plugins like, like Slack. Got a lot of options you can do here. But think about the amount of effort that it took to get us here, outside of me not knowing to scroll down. Outside of that, it was, it was pretty straightforward. So that's Firebase in a nutshell. Um, so this is how you can find me again, Mark Texan. Totally Strong is my uh, mobile app that I'm working on for my for our beta. Go right ahead. You can find that at totallystrong.me. But I would love if I have any time for questions or no. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're no, not, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, one question. He said not what, really. What's your baby's name, man? Oh, yo. Wait. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure you told me at some point. No, no, Boy, no. Boy, girl, no. how no, big, no. and a name. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Yo. Look at that kid. Oh, you guys are just alone. Yeah. Hello, you're dead. Hello, you're So this is baby Wesley. He's nine and a half. Uh, no, he'll be 10 months on Saturday. Something like that. He'll be 10 months old. He is 1,000 pounds. He does not work. <laughs> Which I am really upset about. He does not work yet. All the smartest kids. They don't work and they don't have kids. Man, no job. I mean, I'm waiting on that. But other than that, he's doing good, and so I'm really grateful. But I do want to say thank you to everyone for listening tonight and participating. I had a blast. Hope you did too. And yeah, looking forward to the next time. Thanks.